Hey everyone, so another video coming at you today. Uh, we got some issues, we think. Um, trying to head to 2K in a couple days, Tuesday, it's Saturday, and we've been running the car, and ever since we very first fired it up, as you guys could see in all the videos, the right bank, which is the driver bank, has always been really rich. Um, three sets of injectors, all sorts of different stuff. We even went as far as putting two different O2s in the car, and it's still rich to that bank. So I started unplugging injectors the other night as the car was running and we started getting like a pop out of the driver's side. Like you could almost hear it every once in a while as we were driving it. But once I unplugged the number five uh, cylinder injector, it really started popping consistently uh, once it's all warmed up. So we went through, we checked the valve on number five, we checked all the wiring, injector wiring, uh, ignition wiring and everything. Uh, so today I'm going, we're going to swap over to instead of a 10 plug, which is really cold, but that's what we need for a real high boost. Uh, go to like an eight plug and just see if we can get the car to smooth out and run correctly. If not, I have some stock 24 pound like LS1 injectors. Uh, we might even throw those in the car just to see if we can pinpoint where the issue's at. So that's what we're going to do today and I'll keep you guys updated and hopefully we can figure out this issue so we can head to Texas 2K here in a few days. All right, guys, so we ended up going ahead and pulling all the plugs out to look at everything. Kind of did a little bit of a uh, leak down test just to verify all cylinders match pretty decent. Um, all the plugs came out pretty decent, except for number seven on this side, kind of. It's got a lot of a lot of gunk on it. So uh, I ended up taking the coil from seven, putting it on the other side of the car so we can test that. And then we also took, those are tens. Those spark plugs are uh, NGK tens, and we ended up putting some... Uh, what I run in my car, which is Autolite 474s, which is like an 8 heat range plug. Uh, we don't have any BR8s, so, but otherwise, same idea. Uh, so we're going to fire it and see what the outcome is with those changes. Hopefully, uh, I guess if something moves to the passenger side, it might be coil related to that coil. Uh, hopefully it just fires up and everything runs pretty good, and maybe we can be happy at that. Uh, but we're going to do that now and see what happens. We also left the wheels off uh, so we can reach in here with the temp gun and kind of measure temp on all the cylinders and see what we're getting here. And we'll go from there. All right, so as you can see in this clip, I am starting to pull fuel out of the fuel map and only the left bank is starting to respond. It leans out to about 14 AFR while the right bank stays rich. So just to verify, it had nothing to do with injectors. I ended up putting some stock LS126 pound injectors into the car and I still had to pull 35% of the fuel out to make the AFRs match. So this was able to tell me that it was absolutely not an injector issue. All right, everyone, so today is day like number three of messing with this thing. Uh, I'm back over here putting the 160s back in the car because I was able to verify with the other injectors that that is not our issue. Uh, we still have like 35% of the fuel I got to pull out of the driver bank to even out their fuel ratio. So um, I, as I'm putting these in there, I'm trying to look down the runner. We ended up having a boroscope, so went ahead and grabbed that. So this here's a little boroscope, you can turn it on. Uh, it lights this up and then gives you a little view of what's going on here. So I went ahead and stuck it down the runner, uh, a couple different ones on all of them, except for number seven, you can see the valve. You can see a little bit of stuff on it, but pretty much clean. When I stick it down in number seven, it's just a black hole. And then I could almost start like rubbing it against the valve and you could start seeing the little scratch marks on there. Uh, so the consensus is I pulled it out and I had a bunch of oil on my fingers. So I'm thinking that that valve is probably not sealing the way that it should be, uh, which kind of makes sense with everything else. So we are gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull the valve cover off again. Uh, we already verified the preload on number uh, five cylinder but this is number seven the far back cylinder so we are going to go ahead and do that and i'm going to check and see hopefully the preload is not correct on that cylinder and it's an easy fix uh if not maybe it's something more major that we got to do to figure out how to get seven uh valve to seal but that's that's where i'm at i uh, figured i'd update you guys with that uh, i have a whole other checklist of things to check but it is definitely something weird with number seven cylinder so just going to keep kind of plugging away at that cylinder um Another thing I thought is maybe I've heard that like if your wire gets pinched on the O2 harness or whatever, that could throw off the AFR in that that bank, but consistently that plug is messed up. Um, so that's why I wanted to look at the runner on that one, uh, the intake runner. So again, if you're tuning stuff, the EFI systems are great and all, but definitely, definitely, definitely 
make sure you check plugs, watch plugs, keep looking at plugs. That is your biggest telltale of what is going on in each cylinder. While I'm doing that, April's over here cleaning the golf cart. She doesn't want to walk around Texas 2K, so trying to get it all shined up. So she says she's cleaning it in hopes that we go to Texas 2K. The, the, that the car will get fixed. She has faith that we're going to make it. Uh, so this is her way of giving good vibes to we're going. All right, guys. So from what I was talking about earlier with the soot and the cylinder, we decided to take the rockers off uh, and start checking everything. And we kind of realized that they seem to be loose. So we've come up with a way to kind of set what's supposed to be 40 or 50 thousands preload. Uh, as we're taking them off, these rockers aren't even preloaded at all. And then we ended up with a little deal like this going on. So um, it looks like maybe it wasn't ever preloaded enough, which allowed the push rod to come out uh, of the cup. And then let me get the right one. Oh, he has the one over here. Let me show you guys. We're trying to clean it up to get the uh, burrs off of it. But this push rod has a uh, chunk out of it from where the cup went down into it. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'll try to get you some better light real quick. Um, but you guys should be able to see that hopefully where you can see that the cup went into the push rod there. So trying to get everything cleaned up, put back together and try it, uh, with the correct preload on all of the valves and, then replace these. and replace all the push rods or at least that push rod. Uh, now we probably need to pull apart the other side of the engine to verify those got set right since it doesn't look like any of these got set right on this side of the engine. Um, just a long list of checking everything. You never want to figure that uh, the engine is a mechanical issue, but in this case, it's looking like there definitely is something mechanically wrong, whether or not 100% this is causing the rich condition in this bank, but uh, it's led us to this point where it is something going on. So uh, we'll keep going after all this and trying to see what else we can come up with and try to figure out these issues uh, and hopefully get it all taken care of so we can get this car out eventually. So something also that my dad's came up with while checking all of these is using a push rod measurement tool uh, and then setting it 40,000 shorter than the push rods so then we can actually get uh, 40 thousandths of preload because these rockers are supposed to have 40 to 50 thousandths of preload uh, but it, it's a kind of a difficult thing to do with uh, oil and everything else in the lifters and you get a lot of different readings. So this is what we're using uh, to make sure we get 40 thousandths preload across the board uh, consistently. So as you guys can see, like this engine does have adjustable T and D rockers on it. So a lot of the LS stuff, this doesn't really comply until you start getting into like the higher end builds and 427 with like solid roller stuff. But these do have adjustable. So if you get into an adjustable setup like this, uh, it's definitely seems like there's not a lot of clarification on how to set these, but we're trying to figure it out as we go. All right, so after adjusting valves, you guys can see the air fuel is much better. Much, much better. I pulled a little bit of timing out of it. Hopefully you guys can see that. 14.5, 14.4, 6, super close now. After adjusting the valves on the right-hand side, now the air fuels are much closer. I pulled a little bit of timing out, and it seems to have kind of cleared up the popping just a little bit. So uh, maybe with it being uh, uh, leaned out and then a little less timing, now, now it seems pretty happy. So, uh. so that's a real good sign. Hopefully uh, we're probably going to run through the other side of the motor, verify everything, and hopefully we'll be good. We might have a little bit of luck to make it, uh, but we definitely need to check some more stuff, but much better. All right, guys, so that is much better. Air fuel is much closer. That's after adjusting the valves correctly, or for what we feel is correct, on the right bank, the driver's side. And now we'll probably, just off of verification, check all the valves on this side, which kind of sucks because we got to remove the turbo, I believe, to get that valve cover off. But it would be something to do uh, to verify everything and make sure maybe after we adjust this side, if it needs it, that the motor will match even better. Uh, but otherwise, I think... We might have figured out the issue. All right, guys, so here's the uh, plugs before the valve adjustment is the one with all the black soot on it. And then after a valve adjustment, you can see how much it uh, helped clean up the plug there. So a good sign. We're going to go and get them put back in and hopefully be good to go.
All right, guys, so we got the Buick. It's just ready to go. Uh, hopefully everything is good now. We got the trailer out there, so we're gonna get the car put in the trailer. Uh, so overnight, they, uh, the company that didn't assemble the engine correctly sent us a push rod and a uh, lifter. So we, so my dad got the package. He got it put in here like an hour ago. Uh, so the car is sitting here ready to go. We're literally going to fire it up, check everything one final time and get it put in the box and head to Houston. So, uh, we're going to drive hopefully halfway tonight and then the rest of the way tomorrow get there for tech. Uh, they have a tech day on Wednesday. So then hopefully we can get test hits right away Thursday morning. Uh, cause there's a real slim, uh, window to be able to do some test hits and everything down there. So, uh, we're going to fire it up, make sure air fuel still matches between the two cylinders which it looked good the other day, right after we adjusted everything, but then we found the uh, messed up uh, lifter and push rod. So hopefully all is good again. I believe it will be. So we're gonna check that and then load up. All right. It's always a usually little fat at startup. Now in here you can see it's real close. 12.6, 13.0. So looking pretty good. Should be, uh, should be happy. All right, so we're good to go. Got it loaded in the trailer. We'll uh, get it strapped down and head that way. All right, so the car's all loaded up. It's starting to sprinkle here in Colorado, so we might be getting out of here just in time. Hopefully we don't run into a lot of rain in Houston. Uh, the car's in the trailer. If you guys ever get a trailer, make sure you get the full width. This one's a little narrow, uh, and it's kind of a pain to strap up your cars, but, uh, Otherwise, that's it guys. Appreciate you for watching. No, it's kind of a goofy video. I'm not sure I'm gonna chop it up But you guys will see it whatever I end up coming up with to explain what all we had to go through to get The car in the trailer to be able to head to Texas 2k, but it's in there. We're going so everything uh, Is looking up. So again, thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you guys soon So we have made it to Texas 2k We got the car already teched in and there's people starting to show up now as you can see behind me But it is windy and it is raining uh, sprinkling back and forth, but it's not too bad like it feels good uh, So hopefully tomorrow it clears up and we can get going uh, Kind of looking at some stuff and some numbers It looks like we might have to go like 175 plus in the roll race to even qualify for the event and with no testing on the car That might be pretty difficult But we're gonna give it our best chance come out tomorrow try to get a couple test hits in and then go right into qualifying We get two qualifying runs that I know of uh, so wish us luck and we'll see how this goes